going to push record. And as you can see, we are on share screen. And so let me get over to that screen and we will be going from there. Okay, so, um, and I better have that same view as well. Okay, everybody is, yes. Okay, great. So again, this is um, our scholarship workshop and we're gonna focus on a couple scholarships that are coming up in um, next quarter. And um, because we don't wanna have a panic or anything like that, we just wanted to have it at the end of the quarter here before it got too far into the quarter, but yet you still have plenty of time to think about it. Um, and so just some quick introductions. Um, Let's see, that should do it. Okay, so uh, I'm Dave, and I'm very um, fortunately helped here by uh, two of our helpers. Savannah is our part time worker, Elizabeth is our AmeriCorps worker. Um, Dr. Paige Carroll is here just observing for a few minutes, maybe, but, but saying hi to people. And this is our supervisor, it's all of our supervisor, Tony Garcia, right there. So, welcome again to have everyone here. And so um, just a quick definition, scholarships are um, like a grant they're, once they're given to you, um, you have no expectation to pay them back. Um, and the difference is you need to apply for them and there's an application process, an application essay, which we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. The essay is what pe gives people the most concern when they do um, a, workshop so um, that's what we're going to spend the majority of our time on and we also have some tips for success and bef as we do that I'm just going to check in really quick and say um, Sarah are you here are you hearing us okay and seeing us okay yeah perfectly fine perfect okay great okay so again we're going to focus on two scholarships mostly and, and a couple others and I want you to notice here we have the GHC Foundation Scholarship and then the Grays Harbor Community Foundation Scholarships and as you can see those initials are the same and so it's naturally to be confused by it a little bit they are completely separate um, scholarships with a completely separate purpose. The Grays Harbor College Foundation Scholarships are given out here at the college twice a year, applied for and given out twice a year. And they are for anybody who's attending Grays Harbor College, no matter where they're from, et cetera. The Grays Harbor Community Foundation are for people who are residents of Grays Harbor um, and resident being a year, living here a year and establish yourself or are a graduate of a Grays Harbor County High School. And so a lot of people apply for both. So we'll talk about that. Washington State Opportunity Scholarship is a great scholarship. And then we're gonna talk about the washboard database. And then um, before I forget as well, I don't think Elizabeth is gonna let me forget to um, include, to take a look at our online scholarships, uh, which are available to our Canvas. So we'll get there in a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the GHC Foundation Scholarship. And um, you can see that I've got the light in there, but I'm just going to switch to um, get ourselves online real quick and move us forward. And are we? Nope. So we need a new share. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try stop sharing. Still no luck. Let me try 
again. Okay, we have one more person. I'm going to let them in there real quick. And then you are she screen sharing. I don't know if I have a technical help, Elizabeth, if you want to come help me. Three. And someone else I think, might have just joined us as well. Okay, so I'm trying to get a new share okay. um, to write up here. Did you stop sharing? No, I didn't have that option, I don't think. Um, your, um, so you're screen sharing here. Oh, so stop share. You're right. Thank you very much. It might be easier. Yep, you're, you're correct. Thank you for that help. Okay, so we should all be looking at the main, and we're not. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't think this part was going to be quite as hard. <laughs> or a little rusty. Okay, you should have been, you should have tapped you right into. I just want to get on my mind. This right here? Yeah, that would be fine. But it, it's like it's frozen. You've got to come off. Here, close this. Let's see. Okay. This one is the one that's causing the issue. Oh, there we go. Whew. Okay. Yeah, stop share. Let's see if we can do this again. All right. Sorry. Yeah, your screen. No, it's like his, uh, he's on two screens. So he's got like two computers. Well, let me pull over. So you have, it's, it's reading this as two computer screens. Yes. So instead of reflecting, so let me see if I can okay. change your device. There we go. Now they're seeing what you're seeing on your computer. All right. Um, so it's that. All right. Hold on, hold on. I don't think I saved that. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Because it should have stayed up there. Yeah, it didn't save. Oh, so ready for you. All right. No, stop doing that. No, what is it? Okay, now I'm right. now right. there we go. Now you should be good. Now they're seeing your Zoom screen, and so I'm sorry if I closed anything out. You, it might be right here. Here you go. I picked your mouth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. Finally, thank you, everyone. Um. Um. Bonnie rejoined us. Okay, and that helped. And so what we have here, so just want to show you the quickest way is, well, I did want to show you the quickest way, I already had it, is over here on the right side, we just have this um, quick links here. And if we just go to financial aid and scholarships, it'll take us over to here. And then over to this side, it takes us to scholarships, which are right there. And you can see that on this page, there are a number of different scholarships, but we are going to be looking at this one here, which is general scholarships. The first thing that you can see here is that there are two cycles. Um, the next one coming up is the second one, the spring cycle. It opens in January. Most importantly, it closes in February 28th. And those funds are for the following academic year. Now, 
um, one thing to know is that this other cycle is kind of called the makeup cycle. Um, it's funds that maybe weren't accepted because someone went to a different school or not all the funds were someone wasn't eligible for. You shouldn't be put off by that word in terms of the makeup or the leftover though, because we've had students who've received $4,000 um, in that round. I think one of them is among us right now, but I'm not sure. Um, so you have both of those and that will be in the summer, closes July 23rd, and then that's applicable um, for the entire year, but again, or, or for that exact year. But again, we're right here. We're focusing on the spring cycle. So you can see here, what will I need for the Grays Harbor County? And when it says scholarships, um, that's on purpose. The great thing is, is that this represents maybe anywhere from about 90 to 95 different funds, pots of money. Now you're not gonna qualify for all of them because some are gonna be for people in diesel mechanics. Some are gonna be for people in nursing. Some might be just for people in music but the um, foundation will select the scholarships that you're going to be available for. And then um, there are, as I mentioned, there are plenty. So what do you need for the scholarship? So the application process, and this is fairly typical. So we'll, we'll spend a little time with this. Two letters of reference with original signatures. And that means um, letters of reference cannot be from friends, family, or classmates. I think there might be an exception if a um, friend or family, former classmate or something like that was your supervisor, your employer, something like that um, over, over a time period. But in general, we're looking for either academic or professional. So a good combination, for example, would be um, one from a faculty member um, that knows you well and knows your work and maybe an advisor after that, a former boss, um, someone from your church community, if you've been involved in sports, a coach, basically anybody who can talk to your work ethic, your character, your personality, how you've dealt with people um, in other areas and things that will impact your ability to succeed. Now, original signatures, this has been relaxed recently so that because of COVID and there's just, you know, we're trying to lessen the amount that people are exchanging paper and things like that. So the person can type in their signature. It doesn't have to be an, an absolutely written signature. Um, I'm pretty sure that, that will still be the case. Okay, one copy of your most recent unofficial transcript. If you've been here at the college for a while, it's real easy. You're just gonna go here, click on here, and that's gonna take you to your thing. You're gonna put in your student ID, and then that's gonna pop it out, and then you can be able to scan that in. And then um, if you're a recent high school graduate, and I would say um, probably if this is your first year, uh, you should have your uh, transcripts from your high school as well. Be aware of that. It's not as instantaneous. It might take a week or something like that. It might be a matter of you visiting if they're away or if they're close by or um, going in or just being in touch with them um, through email or through phone if they're not. Okay, and then an essay. And again, we talked about, this is what we'll spend most of our time on because this is the part that students find the most intimidating. So what is your career path and why did you choose it? And we'll talk about all these things. Explain your educational pursuits at GHC and how they align with your career path. What are your plans after graduating? And then the last one, which is maybe the most intimidating, um, which is why do you feel you are worthy of receiving a scholarship? So I tend to think of that in terms of, of maybe obstacles that you've overcome, uh, a real passion you have, and then also things that you might wanna give be, uh, be giving back to the community once you've received your education and um, did that. Uh, to be eligible for need-based scholarships, which several of these are, you must provide your expected, um, your EFC, um, that comes off your FAFSA or your WASFA. And, um, you should know that um, about, I think about 30% of these scholarships are reserved people from reserved for people from Grays Harbor or attended a Grays Harbor High School. The remainder aren't. And some are going to be need-based, some are going to be purely merit. So again, there's a lot of scholarships. The application process is described here. We won't go through it. 
but what I will show you just here, and I won't do anything if I hit it now, but the great news is, is that even though you're applying for what could turn out to be um, a dozen different scholarships, three scholarships, four scholarships, you don't have to submit an application for every single one. Your one application does it. So that's really, really nice. So that's the Grays Harbor Community Foundation. Any questions about that? And again, just those, yes. Um, I have a quick question about the EFC. So if I haven't done that for this year, um, I need to just get a copy of my FAFSA or what, what do I do there? Um, that's a great question. I would talk to financial aid and um, submit um, a FAFSA. If you feel you're going to have any need, if you want to qualify for need-based scholarship, you will need the EFC. So yes, good question. And then we had a question here in the room. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy, that's a great question. I wish I knew the answer to it, but um, you should be able to, and remember that this, this application deadline, I think is the one we're looking at is February 28th. So in the, in the kind of time that it gets there, it, yeah, it should be, should be there by then. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to take a look now. We're going to shift gears. And here's that Grace Harbor Community Foundation. Again, has a similar initials and a similar sound, but um, it's a um, completely different organization. And we're just going to go here to student scholarships and, um, and just walk down here. And so you can take a look and see that every applicant must be a resident of Grace Harbor County. And I would take that to mean if you've been here a year, roughly a year, Maybe you've been working, you have a Washington State driver's license, um, you're established in the county, you're going to school, and only they can decide that for you. Um, so you want to be in touch with them, that's an issue. But um, if it's not, um, and, and again, these scholarships can be used for when you go beyond here. So you're heading out for two years to, for, for a, for a, to finish a four-year degree or even a master's degree, then you should be applying. Um, you can see the other um, information there. And one very nice thing here um, is that you, um, I'm looking for the words here, but it's right here, renewals. Actually, you can refer, you can renew this every three years without having to do a full application. So pretty neat scholarship. And again, scholarships go into the four um, $5,000 range maximum, so a nice, a very nice situation. Another scholarship we're going to talk about here is the Western State Opportunity okay. Scholarship. Yep. We usually read for the college foundation. But yeah, any questions? Okay, so again, that's the Community Foundation. And if you're, like I said, meet that criteria, then you should definitely be applying. This next one here is for anybody in Washington attending any school. It's the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship, and it has different deadlines based on the quarter. And it also has um, different deadlines or different, um, well, both deadlines and both scholarships based on what your uh, academic goal is. So we'll take a look at the one here in the middle first, and you can see that's for career and technical scholarships. And those are for certificates even, and apprenticeship or associate degree. So people going into the skilled trades, um, nursing, and it has to be in a high demand field. And so um, if you want to learn more, I'm gonna just direct you to that. And we've got all the links here for you. 
And the other one is the baccalaureate scholarship, which is for people that are looking to do a four-year degree. So you're gonna look there and um, click on that. And then the deadlines for these, um, let me see here. I had those written down. We'll come back to those in a minute when we, because we had quite a, or a challenge for shifting between things. Um, actually, let me, let me just do this. Okay, and so we're kind of back to where we were. Um, these have slightly different scholarships. They're on your page there. I think one is March 5th and one is about February 5th. They're, they're on your page there. And um, we'll try and get back, back to that in a bit. Okay, another important scholarship source to look at is called the washboard. And I'm gonna put in my, um, private email there and go because um, it wouldn't be good for me to put my college or my work address. And what this is, is this is not one scholarship, this is a database of scholarships. And again, you're going to be putting in your information into this and um, finding out what scholarships are available to you. And so you can see that it happens in these different areas. You have a profile, this tab, and you've got a lot of basic information here. Um, and if you see something unusual here, um, okay, you can see that I've checked that I'm a member of the United Presbyterian Church. If you see something like that, it's because there's probably a scholarship that is sponsored by the Presbyterian Church and they're looking to give it out to students that might also be um, from that. And then um, you're going to have some miniature um, um, essays to do in here. And you want to look through those carefully as well. And um, before I forget to mention it, anytime you do something online, strongly encourage you to do it first on Word or Docs or whatever you're doing, because A, you have the advantage of grammar and spell check. And then B, um, sites crash. You know, they, they, they go offline um, and things like that. You want to have that plus, um, you're probably going to be reusing that or reusing that in a certain place. So cut and paste definitely is one of, the, one of the best tips I can, most important tips I can give you. So we have that, we have academic info and we can take a look at that um, if we can get there. There we go. And so it's asking me, what am I currently? And it's asking me, what are my future plans? It's asking me about my scholastic achievements and um, things like that. And it's asking me about SAT and ACT scores. Some of you might know that some of those grades or some of those scores have not been used as much now. And some places they're optional and some places they're said they're optional, but they're not really optional. So those, um, just to let you know that. Um, it's a little bit of a confusion right now. So again, we're gonna put in here, um, what type of schools are you considering? And you, see, you can see I put in a public to your community or technical college and a public for your university, but you have other options as well. And there, and then activities, they're gonna look at um, what kind of things I get up to. And um, so there's an opportunity for hobbies, different groups that I enjoy affiliations. So um, that could be, I put in Washington State Employees Credit Union because I've been a longtime member and they give a scholarship. Um, a lot of credit unions and banks give scholarships. And then also um, work and service, family service, um, or, or things like that. And an, a great organization is if you're in Phi Beta Kappa, I think is our, definitely put that in as well. Personal info is going to 
ask you about um, that type of information. Um, and again, if you see something and it seems, why are they asking if I'm a cancer patient or survivor? Again, it's likely because they have a scholarship that falls into that category that they have earmarked for people that do that. Now, as you see down here, you have a um, short essay space. And if you'll notice if I type up here, you could see that went here to three characters. And so that means that everything, it's not counting words, it's not counting um, uh, notes just only or letters only numbers, but it's counting characters at all. And so you have about 1500 total. And again, that's where Microsoft Word comes in, um, Microsoft 365, which all of you get for free, by the way, um, as part of my GHC. And you should know that because if you're someone like me, I pay for it at home. I don't know what I pay, a couple hundred bucks a year, I think, so, or maybe more. So um, you're in a great position to have that. And then the last thing here is you're gonna be putting in attachments and these are gonna be letters of reference, um, maybe your college plan activities and an opportunity to put in some more information. So that again is a database that you are going to be able to look at and uh, put in information and find several opportunities. Now, um, you can see that what I've just done here is I've switched to um, Canvas. And um, Elizabeth, can you tell me exactly if I was at home in Canvas, how would I reach there right away? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take my trio course and hit that. And then I guess it's already on there. So, okay, so dashboard. And it's, sorry. Okay, yeah, it fills out with my panels or it should be. It's not doing it right now. So hopefully I can get back to the scholarships. Okay, here we go, right there. So um, Elizabeth in particular has done a lot, a lot of work to get a lot of different scholarships in here. And as you can see, there's, I think there, I believe there's about 130. So in terms of looking for them, I would just simply use your control F, which is gonna be control find, and then it's hiding from me, from you, view. But if I just put in the words nursing, you can see that it comes up with eight mentions of nursing. Several of them are in one program, but there's gonna be others there. There's a scholarship for Tylenol. That's for nursing. Um, other ones might be for math, whatever the subject might be, but that might be a quick way for you to find your way around in there. Okay, now um, I'm going to talk about a, or mention a little bit of a tool here. And this is called ScholarSnap. It used to be independent. It is now part of the college board and the college board are the people who run the SAT and the presat. And you do not have to be taking the PST or the um, SAT or the presats to use this. They have tons of great information on College Board website. One of them is ScholarSnap and it's nonprofit. They're not gonna spam you or anything like that. It was funded by the people who founded Dell Computers. So a very nice service. And I'm gonna show you um, just a little movie about what it does. And again, I have this link in our handout, but this short movie should tell you what it does really, really quickly. And I'll just start it. But it's expensive. Way. You need scholarship money, but you know it will take a lot of time to fill out all of those applications. In fact, you stayed up all night filling out one scholarship application. You wonder if every scholarship application will take you this long. And if so, where will you find the time to complete them all? It's like having extra homework every night. Instead of spending all that time retyping your basic information, name, address, email, birthday, and so on, what if you could enter that information once and then store it in one place in the cloud? And even better, what if you could reuse that content by snapping your basic information directly into other scholarship and college applications with one simple click? The ScholarSnap solution is the key to reusing your application data so you have more time to focus on the unique parts of the application, such as essays. After all, your basic information isn't what sets you apart from the competition. 
And you want those reviewing your application to get to know the real you, right? Not only does the ScholarSnap solution save all your profile, transcript, financial, and family background information, it also saves your original written content from application essays to interview questions. Fill out common questions once and quickly snap your data into any application that works with ScholarSnap. It will automatically fill your content into their application, but only after you give permission. The ScholarSnap solution just made applying for scholarships faster and easier. Apply for more scholarships and increase your chances to win more money in a snap. Get started now at scholarsnap.org. Okay. So um, that is ScholarSnap. And so before we jump in and look at our essay, does anybody have any questions? And first I'm gonna ask our online guest if any of you have any questions of what we covered so far. I'm okay. Okay, great. Okay, and then how about here in the room? Okay, good. Then we'll head on to the essay. Yeah, I'm also good. Okay, good. Thank you. We're going to head on to the essay if I can find the magic <laughs> ability to do it. Okay. And it did it just like that. Wow, holy cow something good must be happening. Okay, so we have a scholarship outline and you have that. And um, um, at the end of this, if you'd like, um, you can make a note on, the, on your um, evaluation form, which we'd like all of you to fill out. And we can send this to you um, online, just so that you can actually use this as an outline. You can just kind of put some spaces in there and just put in some bullet points. That might be what I would, I would, how I would do it myself. Um, so before we get started, these are the things that I would um, suggest is, can you write intelligently about your chosen career path and area of study? And what if you have not chosen it? So, um, and if you haven't chosen it uh, or selected one, there's probably a good chance that you're maybe more passionate about something or a certain area, or maybe you know you don't want to work in a certain area, so that's even the start. But I would suggest maybe looking at a class and a general area that you're really interested in and, and put that information there, why you're excited about to be studying there. Do you know what education is required and how long it will take to complete? Does anybody by chance, just a survey here, know what the, um, the degree is to now work as a physical therapist? No, <laughs> a real physical, a certified physical therapist. It's actually called the DPT, which stands for Doctor of Physical Therapy. So once you finish your four degree, it's generally a four year degree, you come out as a doctor and you're a doctor of physical therapy. And that's happened in about the last 10 years. So if you look on, um, if you have to have physical therapy and you look on a site, and, and you look at someone who's been around for a while, an experienced physical therapist, it's gonna say master of uh, MPT, master of physical therapy. If they're new, they've come out in the last uh, five or 10 years graduated, it's gonna say DPT, so doctor of physical therapy. So again, that's three years and it's available at maybe three or four college, three or four colleges or universities in this state, plenty in other different parts of the country. But if that's your chosen path, just for example, or if you're going into counseling psychology, they're going to need to be certified as a counselor, et cetera. And so you need to know a little bit about um, what that is. And then the last part is be as specific as you can, but be realistic. Um, have a student that um, that uh, is I work with, and she's now graduated on and at the University of Washington. And her goal when she started was to be a neurosurgeon, which is a great goal. And um, not everybody can be a neurosurgeon, though. It's very, very competitive um, because not only do you have to um, be a very, very good student, but you've got to have really good hands. And that's um, not everybody does. Just like not everybody can be a, a a pilot, an ace fighter pilot, you know, and like not everybody can be top gun. But within that, there's you can st still be a neurologist without having to be to operate. 
You can be um, a surgery assistant, an anesthetic assistant in, um, in brain surgery, which is a very well uh, skilled and very well paid for job and a number of other things that would have to do maybe a brain researcher. My godson is now um, a brain researcher and he calls himself mostly a lab monkey. Um, but he, uh, he, he, he went to Western and they had the opportunity as an undergraduate to do graduate level research, which was really great. That got him a job as a lab monkey at the University of Washington in their center for research into spinal and brain injury. And so he was literally slicing very slice, thin slices of DNA, doing D DNA sequencing, sequency, and then that earned him the chance to get his master's degree from the University of Oregon in DNA sequencing and bioinformatics and brain. Um, and now he's out doing contract work for the University of Washington, doing very, very well for himself. And considering that he was a total knucklehead in high school, pretty happy about that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the person I'm talking about, she is in pre-med at the University of Washington, whether she goes into neurosurgery or um, a related field, it's not so important, but she knew that that's her passion and that's where she's headed. And again, there's different branches that you can head off to. Okay, so some research. Now, an intro and opening, and I want you to look and you can see that there's we have a one here, we have a two, we have a three, we have a four. Um, but these are all things that should probably be included, but doesn't have to be literal. For example, if you have a great opening story about something that's happened just now, a class that's happened just now, something in your life that happened now, um, then use that as your opening. I would include all of these things that are under one, two, three, and four, but not necessarily have to be in that order. So who are you? Some basic information. Uh, my name is, and I'm currently a, um, uh, I'm currently a, a freshman or a first year student. I'll be a second year student at Grace Harbor College next year. I'm looking into the pre-nursing program. And um, so I'm excited to be uh, taking uh, general classes now along with a mixture of science classes and I'll be taking my heavier science classes in the future. Where you come from and why that matters. Um, some people have some challenges. Um, we've all heard of the expression of military brat is that someone who literally, they might've gone to seven different schools in the time between kindergarten and high school or more, um, or they had maybe a difficult situation. They had to move from maybe with one parent to another parent and things like that. Just worth talking about and giving people a little sense of who you are. Your past activities, involvement, and work experience. But more importantly, and so that could be anything. We have a lot of people who do some great volunteer work in high school, um, community service. They've done other work in the community. All of that's great. That's probably going to be listed in your work and volunteer in your main application. So it's important to, to probably still list that here to reference it. But more importantly is what did you take from that that will help you be a better student and successful in your chosen areas? And so skills, you might've learned some skills and skills can be really broad. If you worked in retail business or if you worked in the food industry, you have definitely learned some customer service skills. You've learned how to smile when you wanted to smack somebody upside the head probably. Um, you've probably used some diplomacy and some um, skills, de-escalation skills. So you have a lot of skills to offer there and think about those in terms of how those relate to um, what you want to do. Realizations, um, just make this one real simple is that I've said, worked with more than one student who said, yeah, I worked in the summer doing the night shift at the fish processing plant or the shellfish processing plant in um, Montesano for one summer. I never want to do that again. I never want to work, come out of there with raw, you know, charred up uh, bloody hands and being on my feet all day. That's a realization. I'm here to do something. I want to do something other than that. And then any lessons learned. So um, you might've been in school before, found out that it didn't really uh, interest you that much because basically it wasn't that applicable. 
um, to you, but you've come back and you've taken school a whole lot more seriously. Obstacles overcome is an important area, and this is for an opportunity for you to be as candid or as, as, as not candid as you want to be. But if you've overcome a difficult situation that can be anything from a chaotic home environment where studying was very, very difficult to a situation where if you're like me, you got booted out of school for a period of time. Wasn't exactly my uh, best moment. Didn't help my schoolwork, but I, I learned a, a few things about that. Um, not, not the least of which was to um, not get in trouble and to keep my mouth shut. So um, th those are some obstacles overcome. They can be much more serious than that. We have people that have survived um, difficult situations and they can be other people that have just simply um, been on a sports team that maybe they're a swimmer and they were in the water in the morning and in the afternoon, they still had to support themselves or to be able to um, save for college. They still had to work and um, still keep good grades going the whole time. So again, that's an important area, but one for you to be, to for you to choose as can how to be as candid as, or not as you, as you would like to. Okay, currently, what academic track are you on and why? How did you choose it? Um, it, it helps if it's compelling and specific and inspired by a life event or something that you've learned. And one example of that is just a very simple example is that we, I worked with a student and she um, had gone into nursing. And the reason she got interested in nursing and serving other people was that when she was young, maybe nine or 10, she was the only person who could give her grandparent uh, her diabetes shot without being really squeamish about it. And she realized that she felt comfortable around medicine and enjoyed learning about it and enjoyed helping her grandmother um, and all that. So, you know, again, um, something that um, I'm excited about taking her a life lesson. Okay, current grades and what classes are you passionate about? Uh, if you have challenges in your grade, in other words, if they're not great now, what do you plan to overcome to do that? So maybe you arrived at school you weren't really in the habit of studying, you weren't in a situation that was conducive to study, but now you are, you've learned some new study skills, your grades are on the way up. Much better for them to be on the way up than the other direction, obviously. But if you have challenges, if you had a, a loved one die, a, someone close to you die or was sick and you became their primary caretaker, um, don't be afraid to talk about that. So the near-term future, we again talked a little bit about this, after you're earning your AA or SAS or other, um, do you plan on staying here? And TRIO is mostly um, set up to, um, or is definitely set up to work with students who have a bachelor's degree as their goal. Um, not everybody goes exactly in sequence though. They might get an associate's degree, work a little bit, and then go from there. So you might be staying here to complete your degree, you might be transferring, and if so, possibly where and why. And again, what's the typical education path of someone in a chosen field, as we mentioned, counseling, um, uh, physical therapy, et cetera. What are other options that might be of interest to you and of service to the community? In other words, how is your, um, scholarship going to give back? How is your education, you being an educated person, going to help you give back? And um, then in terms of um, farther term, what, what might your career look like? And what are the possibilities? And then what will you be giving back to the community? And that could be this community. It could be community in the broadest sense of the word. Uh, would you do it in pro bono work, which is just a, a uh, basically a vol doing volunteer work, but as a professional, as a health professional, as an accountant, things like that, serve as a role model. If your biggest accomplishment is you're gonna be the first person that's gone to college in your family and you're serving as a role model for your younger and sisters and brothers or for your sons and daughters, that is a fantastic thing to be able to list and uh, put down. So, um, why are you a good investment? And we get that question is come back to why do you deserve a scholarship? So first thing is what's your track record? Um, and again, if your track record has had challenges in the past, but it's on the way up, um, then address that, take that head on. 
or what are you motivated? Maybe you've become very, very passionate about, um, you've seen um, different situations happen here in town. You're very, very passionate about um, wanting to make things better through um, social and human services, through medicine, through becoming a lawyer, through providing uh, legal aid um, for people who really, really need it, but have a hard time importing it, share that. Um, and then any newfound passion, life-changing events. General is right in a warm but professional tone, uh, misspellings and grammar. And like, as I mentioned, consider using Microsoft 365, which is free to you. Um, avoid a lot of redundancies. I have a tendency to, to always write um, as well as, and I look after if I look at my page, I've got as well as five times within the four paragraphs. Just doesn't sound good after you read it for a while. Be as specific about dates and job titles and accomplishments. Now, again, your regular application, the main part of the application is going to have that information. But if you reference um, a job, if you say, um, one example of my skill, my people skills is that I worked at the such and such restaurant um, here uh, locally. And um, we had a longtime customer who was very, very unhappy. And we were able to um, turn that, I was able to turn that situ around, situation around through de-escalation skills. We offered the person a free meal um, because they were great. They came every Friday. You now this couple came every Friday and list that. Um, other things that you've done. So again, if you're in retail, you've probably taken inventory, which requires um, that you be detail oriented and um, things like that. So again, what are we talking about? And then think about your target audience um, as you write, who will be reading your essay. And again, as Tony mentioned, um, some of us, faculty members, community members, and again, they're community members who are love this community. They're probably invested. They might be they're very well scholarship providers. And so they're people that want this community to be healthy. And so that means education, good health care, good park system, safe things for you know, kids and families to do. OK, now the big test is here is can we get back to our PowerPoint? Ta-da! Wow, okay, I feel like I've, that's a major accomplishment. Okay, so let's get it back to a certain um, current slide to a certain view. Okay, and now it says, nope, it likes that. So let me see if I jumped ahead. I did, somehow I got jumped ahead a couple times. Okay. Um, so we've talked about all these things. I want to talk about well, another source of important source of scholarships, which is the place you're going to. So if you just look here at this list, you can just Google in. If you were to Google in Scholarship Central at Central Washington University, um, that's going to have all their scholarships, just the same as we looked at our, similar to how we looked at our scholarships. The UW, including the Husky Promise, Eastern Washington, et cetera, et cetera. Will it take time? Yes. Uh, will writing your essay take time, but put it into perspective and you can see um, some of the dollar amounts there, what should be earning. We've already reviewed the essay handout. So this is a side note. Does anybody know what an actuary is? Okay. And I'll tell you, it's a funny question, but the reason is, is it's that again, thinking about what different type of jobs and doing the research out there. An actuary is a person who decides who <clears throat> makes decisions and learns about risk. They study risk. So this would probably be a job for somebody that loves to crunch numbers, they love statistics, and they don't mind sitting in an office all day doing it. Now, for some people, that might be heaven, and other people, that might be hell, because they would be prefer to be out uh, doing sampling um, for the, the Department of Natural, Natural Resources, uh, doing sapling out in the field, getting out wet um, in the swamps and the tidelands and everything like that, but to each their own. But the reason is I put it in here is why would anybody want to be an actuary? Well, um, it's one of the two or three uh, top jobs related in a variety of factors. You can see the starting scale there. And then beyond that, 
why else would you want to be one? Well, take a look at what's highlighted there. And you can see, and this is even a little data now, $150,000 to $250,000 a year. So again, for the right person, and I only mention it because, again, I'd like you to think a little bit outside the box. If you say you're going to be a business major, great. But what about business? If you love accountancy, think about actuarial science. If you love marketing and things like that, look into different areas. If you love medicine, think about all the different areas there are sonography, um, being a, a, a nurse room, I mean, a sur or emergency room nurse, a surgery um, uh, specialist nurse, things like that. So, kind of closing up here pretty much is remember that your job as a writer is to justify the reader awarding you ones funds. <laughs> You're asking the granters to make an investment in you. Why are you a good investment? Okay. So the things we talked about, maybe life experience you have that's unique that different people don't have, the fact that you work hard, the fact that you're committed to this community, the fact that you've shown that by doing community service, the fact that you're serving as a role model for key people in your life, okay? Try to determine um, what they're looking for and write to that end. Just a quick example, who's heard of something in this town with the name Bishop on it? What, what is it? Uh, the complex. Yep, Bishop Sports Complex. How about else? The Bishop, the Bishop Center for the Arts, okay? And if you look in other places, I'm guessing probably in the hospital, there might be a wing or a room that's the Bishop room. I'm not sure, I don't know. But the Bishop family obviously cared about this community. They cared about young people staying healthy because they've built a complex. They want people to be educated because they're giving scholarships here. They've probably um, supported the hospital and they've supported the arts. So they want quality of life for this community. Um, and so try and find out a little bit about them if you can. It's not always easy, but sometimes you can. Give them a reason to connect with you. And again, that's that human touch, that human story, that one person in the whole family that wasn't too squeamish, squeamish to give the grandmother their diabetes shot. Um, or something else that's unique about you. Um, have at least one person edit your essay. And if you're going to be working with us, um, your student support specialist or myself, please start with an outline essay. Don't start with a kind of stream of consciousness. Although if that's the way you write, stream of consciousness, and then from out of that, we can pull an, an outline, that's fine. But it's very, very hard to sometimes go through that and then have to organize it. And then help. So. Again, TRIO, the Writing Center, um, can help with essay writing and editing. How to write a college essay, this is US News World Report, you can just Google that. <coughs> the free guide to writing a personal statement. Um, the College Essay Guy is a person who makes money by selling books and delivering workshops. But again, <coughs> he has he's great and he has tons of great information on his site. We looked at ScholarSnap and, and the video that told us how, so how to reach us. Um, this is myself here, Dave Brown, your student support specialist, or you can call the main trio office to set up an appointment. And here the links are spelled out just in case um, anybody needs that. And that's our presentation for today. Happy to answer any questions. So first off, I'm gonna ask anybody in the room and then that'll give the people that are online maybe time to um, gather one and then um, unmute themselves and ask a question. So is there any in the room that I can answer? I know we've covered a lot of information. It depends on the scholarship. Um, some of them, I think, when we looked at the Grays Harbor Community Foundation, I think it was a 3.0 or 3.2, something like that. And and again, that was one you don't have to write a complete application. Pardon? Roughly a B average or slightly better than a B average. Yeah. Some are not based that. So, for example, there's one scholarship that's given out by the Grace Harbor College Foundation, which is for at-risk students. They're at risk of maybe not being successful in school and things like that. But again, if you've got your grades are a certain level, 
and you've got a reason about that and you've got a plan to how to take them up, I think that's what I'd focus on. But that's a great question. Yep, Elizabeth? Uh, yes, you can. You can ask your specialist for a letter of recommendation. If you've had a significant um, relationship working with them, your letter of recommendation wants to be really from somebody who can address, uh, again, your work style, your character, your personality, um, your ability to do that. So your letters are going to do that. And don't be surprised, by the way, when talking about letters, I'm glad you mentioned that is that let's say you had an employer two years ago and you got along really well and you had a great record there, you had a great um, experience there. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily gonna remember you. You might need to prompt them a little bit. You might need to say, I worked for you during this time period. Some of the activities that I took on were inventory. I took lead for doing the display on the shop or I took um, lead for doing uh, reordering and one thing that happened was that during my um, my year my my year there, we did four inventories, and and you it, you told us that uh, me being the lead of those ended up with the most accurate inventories we've had since then. So don't be shy about providing some information to your people who are going to write your letters for you. And that's a, that's a really excellent question. Absolutely. And the thing too is that it's really good to include um, just the basic information that you're being asked to do so the person can understand the context. So you can just cut and paste that and what the scholarship's about, for example, send it to them. And again, now the other last thing too, um, um, make it as easy as possible for them to get it. So you wanna have the person that they're gonna address the scholarship to, um, the full address, the name of the scholarship, your full name, et cetera. So make it make it really easy for them to do it. Don't just call them out of the blue and say, would you do this for me? Say, so if they agree to do it for you, I'd be thrilled to do it for you. Again, send them some information. And if you need to, you're going to send them a reminder. You're going to send them the right address and everything like that so they can write a nice letter of recommendation for you. Great question. So do we have any more in the room? And do we have, okay, go ahead. No, there's not a limit. You can reuse it. So you can, um, you have to have two separate letters generally for most scholarships. Some might require three, but some might require two. Some people even request three so they can choose the best two. But it does need to be fairly modern. So I wouldn't go much or fairly up to date. I wouldn't go much past about three, four, five months um, on it. Now, it may be that you used it in the past. And everything about it is still perfectly applicable, but they're still going to put a new, or you are going to help them by putting a new date on it and making sure the address and all that stuff is easy for them. But yeah, you definitely can reuse a letter. But um, if something has happened in the meantime that's positive, again, mention that. Okay. Yeah, great questions. Any folks online with a question? I have a couple. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I, all of this is new. It's been 30 something years since I've been to college. Okay. And um, I had my previous employer and one of the pastors at our church write a letter for me. And this was back in August. Can I still use those? Uh, yes, if it was a period of time. And again, I'd have it. You said it was as recent as last August. This August, yeah, this last August. I'm sorry, I, I was hoping to share you. Um, Letters and they emailed them to me. Yes, so you, um, I would do that. They, it probably means they still have them on their computer so they can update them, put a new date on it and send it to you. Okay, and it, uh, my, my Zoom quit, um, okay. but did, um, 
but it's okay for them to email it to me so I can attach it to the electronic application? Yes, what you're going to do, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that, is you're going to be uploading every um, thing into your, you're going to be, when you go online, you're going, there's going to be a number that's of questions that are going to be fill in the blank, and those are going to be jobs, community activities, grades, um, things you're interested in doing, and then there's going to be things you upload. The upload is going to be your transcript, your um, letters of recommendation, and your essay, and you're going to need to turn them into a PDF. Uh, before you upload them, because that freezes it, and that's the uh, acceptable way of um, of doing that. Okay. Um, but again, I would just um, have the person who gave it to you as far back as August. I think I'd want to have them update it to okay. the current, closer to that. Oh, and one thing I meant to mention too is the Grace Harbor Community College Foundation is February twenty eighth due date. The community foundation is March 1st. So the good thing is you can basically be collecting letters and completing your essay for both right about the same time, as well as any other scholarships that you might find in the database, any of those 130, ones that you might find through the washboard and other ones that you might find. So um, yeah, the idea is we want you to probably write a basic um, essay and have your basic information, maybe through ScholarSnap, but then you're going to be adjusting that um, basic essay. Um, and again, that's why WordPerfect is so word, or you know, Word um, is so helpful for that because you can kind of move things around, emphasize things around, just change the name of the um, scholarship that you're applying for, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and I also meant to say too is that hang on to that because. There are some elements of your scholarship essay which are going to be really compatible with your college application essay too, um, because there are going to be some some things that are very relatable in there. A lot of colleges use different prompts and different things like that, but you'll find some of the information about your background, obstacles overcome, your goals, and things like that to be very very similar. So it's a it's putting your effort into really doing a great job on one group of materials and then being able to cut and paste and use on that. And I think you'll find that a successful way to go. Okay, so any of the people that um, were online and didn't get a chance to pre-sign up, if you will send um, just me an email, um, I will um, send you the uh, copy of the presentation today and the copy of the essay so that you'll have that. And um, if any of you want them, um, the essay particularly, in, I'm talking to people in the room now, if any of the people in the room want that electronically, just let me know too, you can put it on the evaluation form and then we're ready to go. So I've taken this over time because you guys have had such great- What's questions. the email address? Uh, Dave.brown at GHC. Uh -huh dot edu okay thank you thank you so i want to thank everybody so much for being here if there's extra pizza you guys are students we know students are on a budget take some pizza with you <laughs> if you don't the staff's going to snarf it up so thank you everyone thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Really enjoyable thank you everyone online and uh, again feel free to follow up with questions anytime you need to. Otherwise, we'll be saying goodbye now. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too.